What's popping my Pemelites and welcome back. I'm gonna break from the recaps that I've done so far to do a lighter video before diving back into the heavy stuff. With that in mind, today I'm gonna be ranking the Animorphs from my least to most favorite. This list is as subjective as can be and I feel bad even saying that I have a least favorite character since they're all so far above and beyond so much of their cohort in fiction. I'd also like to point out that I read these books as a child and then as an adolescent boy and a lot of my feelings towards the characters have been shaped and very colored by these early impressions. I'll be looking at the following criteria, loosely when evaluating where I place each character on my list. First, we're going to look at character development. So how much does this character change throughout the series? Is their growth rewarding? Does it make sense? Second, I'll be looking at narrative value. Do I enjoy reading the books that this character narrates? And finally, I'll be looking at non-narrative value. Do I enjoy this character's presence in books where they're not the primary narrator? With that said, let's do it. We'll start with my sixth favorite Animorph, and I'm sad to say that this is Cassie. Well, as an adult, I can appreciate how powerful her arc was. As a kid, I found her to be so tiresome. Her constant ethical haranguing got really tedious after a while. I guess I usually just felt like I could guess how Cassie would respond to a situation, and I usually disagreed with her. A lot of the time it felt like she went out of her way to start a debate about the ethics of a given situation, like in the experiment when she gets hung up on whether monkeys are too close to humans to morph. I also really didn't love the way her relationship with Jake devolved towards the end of the series, largely as a result of a specific controversial action that she took that I'm not gonna spoil right now. In terms of development though, Cassie is solid. Her gradual, bitter acceptance of the nature of war serves as a barometer for the tone of the series in general. When Cassie's ripping out hork throats, you know that it's gotten pretty brutal. She added a lot to the books that she didn't narrate, but I guess for me it just wasn't stuff that I cared to hear. It was like whenever the gang was about to go and find a fun, creative mission, she'd be there telling them that they were about to spill beer on the proverbial couch. Cassie also just got the worst books. Maybe as an adult I can appreciate the nuance of a book like The Unexpected, where Cassie took a trip to Australia for literally the entire book, but as a kid I found it so boring. I'm sure that others experienced her narration differently. If you feel like yelling at me for my 12 year old boy mentality, there is a comment section for that. Number 5, Jake Berenson. I don't know why I included his last name here, it just kind of makes me laugh, it always reminded me of the Berenstain Bears. I love Jake and I appreciate his growth throughout the series. If Animorphs is a war story, Jake's arc is quintessential, he's the leader. His books are also definitely among the most fun to read, again because he's the leader he gets to narrate a lot of the more important plot points. The way that they use Tom to put Jake in untenable situations is always fun and gives us some excellent books. I'm thinking about The Conspiracy here, which I always liked quite a bit. That's the one where Jake's grandfather dies and they have to go to his funeral and it's going to be more than three days so Tom won't be able to get his Condrona fix. For me though, Jake is brought down by a few things. I really don't like the way that he handles the situation that I already mentioned with Cassie and Tom towards the end of the series. As I wrote this, I actually came to the realization that I never really cared too much about Jake. Jake and Cassie's relationship as a whole, and I think that there are two main reasons for this. The first is that they're boring, and the second is that they are tedious. It takes forever for their relationship to get anywhere, and in the meantime, nothing happens. It's just assumed, and mostly unspoken, that they like like each other, but there's never any tension or struggle until the series is about to end, at which point it is nothing but dissonance. My reaction when Cassie and Jake finally kissed was kind of just well, I guess it finally happened. And when they were having relationship troubles towards the end of the series, there was just so much going on with the war that I guess it kind of took the back seat. Contrast this with Rachel and Tobias and you may start to see what I mean. Jake is a strong and consistent character and he's essential to the Animorphs formula, but he's a little bit predictable. And while his books are fun, this is largely because of the nice quick paced plot as opposed to a unique narrative quality that only Jake brings. Rachel is number four. I love Rachel. I enjoy her development quite a bit. It is really cool to get a first person window into the cudgel of the group and to witness her growth into that role. Rachel's additionally interesting because she's this super attractive, charismatic girl. You wouldn't expect her to play the role that she does in the Animorphs. However, for whatever reason, I just like Rachel books on average a lot less than the other characters. Cassie's lowest on this list, but a few of her individual books are top five contenders for me. I don't know that the same could be said for Rachel though, and I found a few of her books to be just stressful and not enjoyable. Notably, I thought the separation where she's split into a good Rachel and a bad Rachel was boring and repetitive, and the return was an unexpectedly confusing fever dream. This is the one where David comes back, the droad is in it, I never liked the droad. A lot of Rachel's conflicts revolve around her family life, and while I can relate to having some family issues as a kid, for me personally, that drew me to Tobias as a character rather than Rachel, although gender may have something to do with that as well. In any case, I never found Rachel's family drama too compelling, and while 
while her narrative voice is fine to read, it is a bit one-dimensional. My favorite Rachel book is probably The Underground. Bat Rachel is awesome. I also should state that her books usually get a lot of fun action, since Rachel is usually in the center of it, and the occasional development of her relationship with Tobias is also always enjoyable. If you hear whining in the background, I apologize. We got a puppy a couple months ago, and she has some separation anxiety still. Getting into the top half of the list, Axe is number three. My top three contenders are like a hair's width apart, by the way. I find Axe to be almost as funny as Marco is. His dry observations about human culture and the way he slowly learns sarcasm and starts trolling the other Animorphs is nuanced and hilarious. The juxtaposition of this subtle humor against his antics surrounding food make his books pretty reliably funny, which is refreshing in this series. When he gets a TV in his scoop and he gets all hung up on these messages is one of my favorite parts of the series. His principal conflict around self-identity is also intriguing and it fits in alongside Tobias's journey of self-discovery really well. His dialogue is also very well written, whether he's trolling Marco or talking to Tobias about Andalite culture, and through him we get a great representation of the Andalite race and all of its facets. The inclusion of X in this series was masterful and brilliant and I love him. He also is usually a great addition to the books that he doesn't narrate, whether through humor or exposition about the Andalite race. The only reason he's slightly edged out by number two on this list is because I found that in some of the books where Axe isn't the main narrator, they can kind of phone his character in. This doesn't happen too frequently in earlier books, but in the ghostwritten books later on, he's kind of just a sarcastic side character, and I feel like we already have a better version of this in Marco. I know there's an argument that this fits in with the development of his character, and even as I wrote this, I was partially on board with that. Axe, by the end of the series, is war-hardened and emotionally battered from all the strife that he's had surrounding his identity identity and allegiance, so I guess it would make sense that this would be the way that he is in the end. Regardless, I did find it to be a little bit on the nose. Anyway, I mentioned Marco, and my number two is Marco, and there are three reasons that Marco is in this spot on the list. The first reason is that Marco is funny, and he really is. I still laugh out loud reading Marco books, and he reliably adds value to the books that he doesn't narrate with his humor as well. He's sarcastic, but he doesn't take himself too seriously. He's super smart, but rather than using that trait to be pretentious and make others feel bad, he uses it to boost people by making them laugh. He's constantly giving the other Animorphs pep talks when they're struggling, and he seems to know exactly how to bring out the best in each of them using earnest, relatable dialogue. Speaking of relatability, the second reason that I rank him so highly is that Marco is relatable. Marco is the most rational of the Animorphs, which makes him less of an archetype than some of the others. In dialogue with the others, he usually provides a voice of reason that's closest to what the reader might be thinking. He's billed as the most logical of the human Animorphs. He's realistic about danger, he's honest about risks, and he isn't afraid to bring all of this to the group's attention. And not only is Marco individually relatable, he makes the whole group a lot more believable by providing a ballast and reason for the rest of them to refer to. The third reason that I've ranked him so highly is that Marco's character arc is ridiculous. Without giving away too much, Marco's main character arc is Game of Thrones level fun. And the way that he handles all of these extremely emotionally high stakes environments that he's thrown into always feels so real. Marco's Excellent. I would recommend Animorphs as a series to people based on the strength of his books alone. And with that, we're on to number one, and I doubt anyone would be surprised if you've seen any of my other content, but my favorite character in Animorphs is Tobias. The prevailing reason for this is because I was a very angsty child, prone to rumination even in my early years. I related to Tobias on this level, on feeling like a social outcast even though I never really was one, and in the way that Tobias never really felt like he had a home. My home life was fine, but there were points when I really wished that things were different, and in those times, I kind of wish that I could have been a hawk in a tree in a forest chilling with my alien friend. I also was super impacted by Tobias's passages depicting flight. These were moving in all the Animorphs books, but recorded Tobias's identity and self-validation. I'm learning to hang glide later this year, specifically because I read Animorphs and because of Tobias. Also, his name is Tobias, which I never knew how to pronounce when I read these books originally, and I always really liked that, because I imagine that people probably got it wrong a lot. My name is Marcello, and something that I hated as a kid was that no one would ever get my name right or remember it. People hear three syllables that they've never heard before and they just don't register it, so they would just not remember my name. And that was the reaction that I had to Tobias's name. I was like, this is a name, this can be a name. And in my mind, that was how people reacted to me and I just loved that I could relate to him on that level. So beyond my personal nostalgic attachment to this fictional bird boy, he is ranked number one for a few less subjective but still subjective reasons. His character arc is superbly cool and is entwined with characters that span the entire Animorphs universe, including the companion novels, which I highly recommend. I would argue, and probably will argue in a future video, that Tobias is the real main character 
Order of Animorphs. His books may not be the most fun read for everyone, but the flying passages combined with the world-expanding plot revelations we tend to receive randomly in Tobias books make them compelling and moving. If I had to criticize Tobias, I might say that he tends to not add a ton to books that he's not in and is virtually absent from a few books. Honestly, on paper, if I were organized enough to be actually grading this on the criteria that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I bet Marco would beat Tobias, but it's my video, so Tobias wins. If you disagree with my ranking, please feel free to slap the dislike button, leave a comment down below, or make an Animorphs ranking video of your own. See you in the next one.